Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 8, The Long Division Algorithm. Classwork Example 1 says to show that the decimal expansion of 26 over 4 is 6.5. There's many ways we can do this. We can see that they're both even and reduce those to 13 over 2. And 2 goes into 13 six times with a remainder of 1. And 2 goes into 10 five times. We can do it simply like that. We could take 26 over 4 and say, well, if I make that into hundreds, I multiply the top and bottom by 25, then I can get... 25 times 25 is 625 plus another 25 is 650 over 100 and move the decimal two places and get 6.5, okay? But using the, show that the decimal expansion is that, there's we can do that or we can even do long division, which we will do on the next exploratory challenge. One through five A says, Use long division to determine the decimal expansion of 142 halves. So we take 2, and we take 142 and divide it by 2. 7 times 2 is 14. Bring down the 2. 2 goes into 2 once. So the answer is 71. B. Find the blank, fill in the blanks to show another way to determine the decimal expansion of 142. Well, 141 is 71 times 2 plus no remainder. 142 equals 71 times 2 plus no remainder divided by 2. 142 equals... 71 times 2 plus no remainder, 0 over 2. So now we're separating the denominators. And then 71, 142 equals 71 plus 0 over 2. Because these 2's cancel. Okay, so we take 71 times 2 plus 0. 71 times 2 plus 0, all divided by 2. And then we assign the denominator to both parts of our binomial here. The plus sign separates terms. So we put a 2 under this side and a 2 under this side. And then on this one, the 2's cancel, leaving us with 71. And then the 0 over 2 is simply 0. So 71 plus 0 is 71. Part C says, does the number 142 divided by 2 have a finite or an infinite decimal expansion? Well, it's finite. There was no remainder. It was 71.0. It does not go on forever and ever. It stops. Number 2 says, use long division to determine the decimal expansion of 142 divided by 4. So we would write 4. 1, 4, 2. 4 goes into 14 3 times. 4 times 3 is 12. Subtract 4 minus 2 is 2. Bring down the 2. 4 goes into 22 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. Subtract and get a 2. Bring down the next 0. And 4 times 5. Forgot to mute my phone. 4 times 5 is 20. Subtract and get 0. So the answer is 35.5. Okay, so now it says to fill in the blanks to show another way to determine the decimal expansion of 142 divided by 4. Well, 142 equals 35 times 4 plus 2. Because 35 times 4 is 140, so 140 plus 2 is 142. And now we're doing the same thing as before. We're now going to divide both sides by 4. So we're going to take 35 and put 2 here. And we're going to divide the whole thing by 4 because we have a times because of this 4 here. So when we do that, 
we have 35 times 4 and 2 here. And since we have this plus sign here, this denominator of 4 can go to each, and we can split the fraction into two parts and have addition in between. And then when we see that, these 4s will cancel, leaving me with 35 and the 2 over 4 here. And then, therefore, it's 35, and 2 divided by 4 is a half, or 0.5. So it's 35.5. Clean that up a little. That was a messy five. Okay. Part C. Does the number 142 over 4 have a finite or an infinite decimal expansion? It is finite. 35.5 does not continue. It stopped at the tenth position. Number three. Use long division to determine the decimal expansion of 142 divided by 6. So we take the 6 and we put 142. 6 goes into 14 2 times. So that's 12. Subtract, get 22. When I bring down the 2, 6 times 3 is 18. Subtract, 22 minus 18 is 4. Bring down a 0. And 6 times 6 is 36. And that would be a remainder of... 4 again, bring down the 0, and you see that that is now going to repeat forever and ever. So it's 23.6 repeating. And doing the filling in the blanks to show the other way, 142 is um, did I do this right? 142 divided by 6? Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to fill this in. So we got 23 here. So it was 6 times 23 ended up with a remainder of 4. So we put plus 4. So the 23 goes here, and the 4 goes here again. And we're going to divide the whole thing by our 6. And then we are going to split the two, the fraction up into two fractions because of the plus sign. And now we have 23 times 6 plus 4. And they're both going to have their own denominator of 6. And then these 6s will cancel, leaving me with an integer of 23 and 4 6, or 23 and 2 thirds, which is 23.6 repeating forever and ever and ever. Okay, and then answering the next question, it has an infinite decimal expansion. Number four says you lo use long di division to determine the decimal expansion of 142 elevenths. So we take 142, we divide it by 11, and 11 will go into 14 one time, and we get 32. So 11 will go into 32 twice, and we get 10. So there's our remainder. Keep that in mind, because that's going to go here. And then we're going to expand it out and bring down a 0. And 11 goes into 109 times, because it's 99. Subtract, and we get 10 and bring down another zero, and now I see a pattern, and it's going to continue nine, 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 nine forever and ever. So then when I come down and fill this in, it is 12 times 11, which is 132, plus 10, which is 142. So 142 is 12 times 11 plus 10, then we're going to divide both sides by 11, so the 12 stays there and the 10 stays there, and then we're going to separate the binomial and the numerator. So then we have two fractions, 12 times 11 over 11 plus 10 over 11. And then these 11s will cancel, leaving me with an integer of 12 plus 10 elevenths. And therefore, we get 12 and 10 elevenths, which equals, my pen's not cooperating, And that equals 12.999, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay. 
Does the number 142 over 11 have a finite or an infinite decimal expansion? It has an infinite decimal expansion, as you can see. Okay, and looking back at this, I made a mistake. Okay, so right here, when I had to come down, 10 would not go. So this is wrong. Um, 9 times 11 is 99, and I got 10. 11 will not go into 10, so I have to say 0, and then bring down a 0, and then that would go 9 times, and then 0, and then that would repeat. So I apologize for that. So the answer is not 9 repeating. It is 909 oh, repeating. But it does repeat, and it is an infinite decimal expansion. Okay, number five. In general, which fractions produce infinite decimal expansions? Okay, so we discovered in lesson six that fractions equivalent to ones with denominators that are a power of 10 or factors of two and five are precisely the fractions with finite decimal expansions. These fractions, when written in simplified form, have denominators with factors of composed of twos and fives. Thus, any fraction in simplified form whose denominator contains a factor different from 2 or 5 must yield an infinite decimal expansion. And that is really cool, actually. All right, examples, exercise 6 through 10. Does the number 65 over 13 have a finite or infinite decimal expansion? And does its decimal expansion have a repeating pattern? Okay, this first one's a trick question. Does the number 65 over 13 have a finite or infinite decimal expansion? So with what we just said, 13 is prime. It is not a factor of 2 or 5. You can't get it in multiples of 10. So you would probably think that it is an infinite decimal expansion. But if we do this, and if we think of 65 over 13, well, 65 is 5 times 13. And if I put that over 13, the 13s cancel, and 65 divided by 13 is 5. So it is finite. Viewed as an infinite decimal, though, it would be 5.0000 repeating. Okay. Number seven, does the number 17 over 11 have a finite or infinite decimal expansion? So going back to this, there's an exception to the rule. If the denominator is not a multiple of two and five only, you would expect it to be infinite decimal expansions. But if the numerator is a multiple of the denominator, then you're going to get an integer answer. So in this one, 11 is prime. 11 is not a multiple of 2 or 5. 11 will not go into 17. So I would, at that point, say that this has an infinite decimal expansion with a repeating pattern. And if you want to check that, then I can simply go 11, 17, and get 60. 1 times 11 is 11. Subtract, get 6, bring down the 0. 11 goes into 60 five times. That's 55. Subtract, 60 minus 55 is 5. 11 goes into 50 four times. That's 44. Subtract, that's a 4. And get 6, bring down another 0. And 11 goes into 60 five times. And then it's going to repeat 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, 4. So it has a repeating pattern. Number 8 is the number 0 0.2121211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211211
and therefore this is a rational. By definition, a rational number is a number that can be expressed as a ratio, a fraction. Okay, so if I take this number, 2, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, and then add another 1, then add another, and add another in between the 2s, this is a pattern that continues on forever. This is not a repeating pattern, so therefore it is um, irrational. I cannot write this as a decimal. Number nine, does the number 860 over 99 have a finite or infinite decimal expansion? Well, 999 is 11 times 9, which is 3 times 3 times 9. No factors of 2 or 5, so therefore it is an infinite decimal expansion. And it's asking if it has a repeating pattern. And since it's written as a fraction, it is a rational number. So therefore, it has a repeating pattern, okay? So it's irrational if a pattern doesn't repeat. It's rational if it does repeat, but it has an infinite decimal expansion if it's not multiples of two or five, okay? Hopefully, you're getting the hang of this. And number 10 is the number 0 0.12345678910111213131. blah, 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 blah. Okay, so what are they doing here? They go from 1 to 9, and then put a 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So they're just adding numbers to the decimal to the next point. So they're adding, so next would be 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6, 2, 7, 2, 8, 2, 9, 3, 0, 3, 1. So they're just adding multiples of uh, two-digit numbers, or they're just adding one each time to the next uh, set of numbers. Um, so this will continue forever. So therefore, I can't write it as a fraction. So it is irrational. Okay. Since that continues, it is irrational. So what you would say here is, although the decimal expansion of this number has a pattern, it's not a repeating pattern. Since it's not a repeating pattern, this is irrational. Okay, that is the end of Lesson 8. Review the lesson summary and go do your problem set.